need to handle and manage ragged hierarchies in your Power BI desktop or your SSAS semantic model? Stay tuned. Hey guys, what's up? Me, Patrick, guy in the queue. What's up? How you doing? Been a minute. Um, in today's video, we're going to talk about ragged hierarchies, you know, ragged hierarchies and how SSAS 2017 or Azure Analysis Services addresses them. Okay. So of course, you know me, there's always a story of why I'm doing this. And so let me tell you a story. So I had a customer call me they say, Hey, Patrick, we have an organization structure. We got the CEO and all the people that report under him. These people can have a different number of people that report like this manager may have three people. The next manager may have two. The problem is when we display it, it shows blanks and we want to suppress those blanks, right? So the hierarchy is ragged and we want to make it, it's going to be ragged, but we want to get rid of the blanks. Okay. And so I thought about it and I was like, we're trying to do it in Power BI and it just won't work. It's like, Hmm, let me go do some research. So I remembered SSAS 2017 or Azure Analysis Services, right? Either one of them, um, they had a new feature um, to support ragged hierarchies. And so went to do some research. That's where my research started. Let me show you how it works, right? Let's head over to my laptop. All right. In SQL Server Data 2s, I've built out a model and Casper Dijon wrote a great blog post. And there's actually a lesson out there that you can go and it shows you how to build out the hierarchy using AdventureWorks, okay? And so I have this hierarchy that I built out, which takes the path. This path shows the different people that report to that person, right? And so I built out using the low DAX, I built out an organization structure down to five levels. And you can see there's my organization hierarchy. Okay. And so when I go over to Excel and so here's the property and by the, you know, here's the property, sorry. Right. Um, here's the property for, um, the ragged hierarchy. And so I'm just going to accept the default behavior right now. And we're going to go over to Excel and what we're going to do is we're going to connect to our model. And so something I want to show you this a little, a little tip, um, that's available in data tools. When you go into the, um, when you set up your workspace server, when you go into integrated workspace mode, you get the local workspace server. Isn't that cool? So what that means is I can actually connect to that model while I'm building it. Okay. So there's ways to do it. Marco and those guys, they have a, you know, a way that you can get it. And then you can even run a little, uh, commit from the command prompt to get it. But now it's just built in the visual studio. All right. So we go ahead and copy that, including the port. I'm going to head over to Excel and I'm going to do some get data, get some data from a database and I'm going to choose now services, pop that in there, local host in the port, click next and just go ahead and click next and click finish. All right. Yep. Already did it a couple of times. I know. All right. So once that's done, I get my pivot table with my pivot field list. Um, I tell it, right. That's what I want a pivot table. All right. So now I can see my hierarchy, I'll go ahead and click it. And then I'm going to expand it and you can see the blank, the dreaded blank. I don't want to see that blank. Make it go away, Patrick. Hang on. I'm going to show you. Let's go over to Power BI. Maybe Power BI handles it a little better. So I'm going to do the same thing. Get connected. Choose. Pop that in there. Click OK. And get to my model. Click OK. All right. And so we're going to use the matrix because the matrix has that drill capability in it. And I'm going to go ahead and pop my organization in there. And you can see there's, you know, the top level. Let me make this a little larger for you. There's the top level. And then I'm going to enable drill and I'm going to drill down. Oh, there is the blank again. Oh, then I remember, Hey, there's a custom visual. There's a hierarchy custom visual. So I'm going to go to the store. This is a great feature that they released last month directly from the store. And I'm going to go find that hierarchy. There it goes. Hierarchy slicer, add it to my visualizations. Go ahead and bring it in. There we go. And make sure it's selected <clears throat> and click organization. Bam. Expand Ken out. Ooh. Blank. How do we fix this? Well, fortunately in the latest version compatibility 1400 SSAS compatibility 1400, I have the option to hide, to hide them if it's blank. All right. So go back to data tools. I'm going to head over back to, <clears throat> I'm going to head back to data tools. All right. You guys come with me and I'm going to go back to my hierarchy. All right. 
and you can see hide members instead of default, we're gonna change that property to hide blank members. Those blanks, we're gonna hide them. It's building, it's doing everything it needs to do. I'm gonna head back to Excel, head over back to Excel. I'm gonna click refresh, bam, the blanks are gone. Excel, oh, right? So Excel works perfectly. Let's try it in Power BI. Let's head over to Power BI. We got two blanks, we got the blank there and the blank there. We're gonna click refresh, boom, Poof. heartbroken, all right? Not quite ready in Power BI. I got. I'm, I'm guessing. You know, maybe they're working on it. They, those guys have a queue. Um, I need to go check the feedback page to see if somebody's requested. If not, I'll create a feedback. You guys got to vote it up, vote it up, vote it up. Okay. Um, but we'll see, right? But <clears throat> then I thought, well, I got a custom visual here. Maybe there's some property in the custom visual that I can go and set. So let's go. Right. I go to the custom visual. I click on format and expand selection. What? What is that? Empty leaves. They're turned on right now. Let's turn them off. So I go ahead and turn them off. Oh, the blank went away. Wait, let's do it again. On, there's a blank. Off, there's no blank. So it got me to thinking, do I really need to set that property in SSAS Tableau model to make this work? Hmm. Well, let's see, All right? So I head back over to my Tableau model. I'm gonna turn this off, All right? So the blank is back. I'm gonna head back over to my Tableau model. And what I'm gonna do is go back over to my hierarchy. There we go, and go back to default. So I'm not gonna hide the blank members. Bills does everything it needs to do. Go back to Power BI and refresh. The blank is definitely still there, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn empty leaves off, bam. So what does this mean? Well, so it'll work whether you have it on or off with your tablet model, or if you build your model in the desktop, you should be able to turn this off and hide your blank members. So either way it'll work. With Excel, tablet models work great. Marriage made in Redmond, Power BI, it's gonna get there, I guess. I'm not sure, I don't work on a product team. All right, um, I'm guessing those guys are working on it. What do you think? Have you done this a different way? Have you run into this challenge before? You got questions about it? Post it in the comments below. Um, if this is your first time visiting the channel, be sure to subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.